working with our trig functions more in more like we did like we do other kinds of functions and the reason we do that is we want to be able to evaluate and simplify things that involve trig functions um, we want to solve equations that that involve trig functions um, trig functions come up a lot in in applied in in science and engineering so we want to we want to develop some tools not just for knowing what they are but how do we work with them as functions so that's what we're going to start start doing today um, and the work our start is going to be working with working with identities so that's our that's our topic today so we're just adding adding some tools to our toolbox and uh, practicing practicing a little bit with our tools. So let's remember our identities, the identities we're going to use. The first are our reciprocal identities. So I'm going to say sine x equals 1 over cosecant x. And cosine x equals 1 over secant x and tangent x equals 1 over cotangent x. And we can change these, flip these over to find the reciprocal. So we also know that cosecant x equals 1 over sine x. Secant x is 1 over cosine x. And cotangent x is 1 over tangent x. So these are our reciprocal items, just for remembering. And so we can refer back to them today if we need to. Um, so no, nothing really new here. Our quotient identities. So what's another way we can write tangent x? Mm -hmm. Sine over cosine. Sine x over cosine x. So that's another way we can write tangent x. And then we can do the reciprocal of that one as well. So the cotangent we could write as <coughs> cosine x over sine x. And then we have probably the most important identities, our Pythagorean identities. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And then we have two more that came from that one. We have 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. And we got that one from dividing everything by um, cosine squared. And we could write it the 1 in either place. And we also have 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. And we got that from dividing our original Pythagorean identity by sine squared x. So these, these that we've written down so far are the ones that come up the most often, the ones that we'll get the most use out of. Are we good so far? Now we also have, there, is a, there are a couple of other identities we've talked about. Our cofunction identities, and I'm just going to write the three main cofunction identities. Sine of 90 degrees minus x equals what? Cosine x. Cosine of 90 degrees minus x equals sine x and tangent of 90 degrees minus x equals cotangent x. Um, 90 degrees, what's 90 degrees in radians? Pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 minus x 
equals sine x. That ring a bell? Um, all right. So, and then we can do it. this. This works for all the other pairs of cofunctions as well. So I could, uh, I could write the same for the cosecant and the secant and the cotangent and the tangent, etc. So I'm just going to write the three main ones there. And then we have our even and odd functions, even and odd identities. So sine of minus x is a sine function even or odd? What is it? Someone said it. Odd? Sine function is odd. So sine of minus x, that tells the sine of minus x equals minus sine x. Cosine. Cosine even or odd? Even. So cosine of minus x equals cosine x. Tangent is odd. So tangent x equals minus tangent minus x equals minus tangent. And then all the relatives are, this, are even and odd the same as these. So cosecant would be odd, secant would be even, cotangent would be odd. So we have the same, the same thing going on. All right, so these are the identities we're going to use. The, the, the quotient, the reciprocal, and the Pythagorean identities are the ones that we use most often. These don't show up quite as often, but, but we still use them. So these are the these are how we're going to use the identities. We're also going to be using our algebra tools in this chapter. A lot. So the tools that we're going to use. Our first ones, our primary ones for this chapter are the identities. Um, we are also going to use factoring to our algebra tools. We're going to do, be doing some factoring. We're going to add and subtract often with fractions. So we need one of our tools as a common denominator. We're going to simplify. We're going to substitute. And we're going to rewrite. So just like we just like we do with algebra, with algebra expressions and algebra equations, we're going to be doing all of these things with trig equations and trig expressions. And then we add this, we add our identities because that's another tool that we can use. So what I want to do next is just go through several examples of different types of problems using these tools in different combinations to, to work, work several kinds of problems. Um, these are the types of problems we do in these first few sections of chapter five. Are, it's like solving puzzles. We're not solving an, solving an equation. We're not coming up with a number for an answer. We're, we're, we're trying to get from one place to another place using using all of these things. There's not one right way to do a, a lot of these. So that's that's one thing that makes it challenging is you don't necessarily say start here and do this and do this and do this and do this and then you're done. Because there there are often multiple ways to do do a problem. So I just want to do an example of several different kinds of problems. Alright, so the first one, and we've done We've done a problem like this before, but since we're talking about identities, I want to do another one. So we're going to say the cosecant of x equals negative 5 thirds, and the cosine of x is positive. Use identities to find the other trig functions.
All right, so if we were not using identities, if we were using what we did in chapter four, how would we, how would we go about solving this problem? So we, we, draw, we find a quadrant and then we draw our triangle. So we draw a triangle. This tells us about the side lengths of triangle. This tells us about what quadrant we're in. So that's, that's exactly what Ben was saying. Um, we draw the triangle. Find the missing side length and then use that to find our other trick functions. This wants us to use identities. Well, Ben also gave us another hint. Cosecant is related to sine. So I can say sine x equals what? Negative 3 fifths. And then I'm going to use an identity. I'm going to say that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So I get cosine squared x equals 1 minus 3 fifths, negative 3 fifths squared is 9 20 fifths. So cosine squared x, 1 minus 9 twenty fifths is 25 twenty fifths minus 9 twenty fifths, 16 twenty fifths. So cosine x, take the square root, 4 fifths. And this is essentially what we do when we draw the triangle and find the missing side. This comes from the Pythagorean theorem, same thing. All right, so there's our sine, and we know the cosine is positive, so we don't have to adjust the sine, the positive or negative here. Um, how would we find tangent now? Tangent x equals sine over cosine, so that's going to be in minus 3 fifths over 4 fifths which is negative three-fourths. So there's my sine, there's my cosine, there's my tangent. Take the reciprocals to find the co-functions. And it all came from this Pythagorean idea. All right, questions there? five-fourths. Secant x would be five-fourths. Cotangent x would be negative four-thirds. And then we have the cosecant on the side. All right, let's look at another kind of problem. On these next ones, we want to simplify. So all the problem is asking us to do is simplify. Here. So let's simplify. Um, cosecant squared x times cotangent x minus cotangent x. Anybody have an idea what we might want to do to simplify this? Yes? We could use the reciprocal identities. Um, let's think, is there something that we could some, some kind of algebra that we could do before we start using identities. Factor. We have a common term of cotangent. So let's factor that out. So that equals cotangent x times cosecant squared x minus 1. Whenever I see a trig function squared and a 1 together, I think Pythagorean identity. So this cosecant squared x minus 1. Let's go back here. Uh, one more. Cosecant squared x. If I subtract 1 from both sides here, what do I get? Cosecant squared x minus 1 equals cotangent squared x. So this equals cotangent x times cotangent squared x, which is cotangent to the third base. 
And that's that's my answer. That's as far as we want to go. Yes. Um, this is like this is like x squared y minus y. Uh, okay. So these two are multiplied, so we can't just can't uh, we just subtract. Them. Okay. And I would rather work if we were working doing some kind of problem, had some kind of equation that involved this. I would rather work with cotangent cubed x than this thing. This is much simpler than this. All right, questions there? Okay, let's look at another one. Let's simplify tangent x times uh, sine x plus cosine x. All right, we don't have any factors that, that jump out at us immediately. So what could we do here? What have we done before when we were working with, with problems like this? Change tangent to sine over cosine. So this equals sine x over cosine x times sine x plus cosine x. And now I can multiply here. This equals sine squared x over cosine x plus cosine x. Now, how can I add these two together? What do I need to add these two together? Common denominator. So how can I get a common denominator? What do I have to do? What if I had one third plus one? How do I find my common denominator? Multiply this by three. My common denominator here is cosine x. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine x over cosine x. So I have this in the denominator. So this is sine squared x over cosine x plus cosine squared x over cosine x. I have a sine squared and a cosine squared. So I can write this as sine squared x plus cosine squared x over cosine x. And sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So this is 1 over cosine x, which equals secant x. And that's my answer. So this thing simplifies to secant x. Much rather work with secant x in a problem than this. So we wrote, us, wrote everything in terms of sines and cosines, found a common denominator, used an identity, and we get our answer. Questions on that one? All right, let's step it up one more notch. We want to simplify this one. Secant x over tangent x minus tangent x over 1 plus secant x. We want to simplify that. So what are we going to do here? We could rewrite in terms of sines and cosines. I don't think that would make things a lot simpler. How can we subtract these two from each other? What do we need? We need a common denominator. So in this case, What is our common denominator? What if we had something like one-third minus one-fifth? How would we find the common denominator here? What is it? 
multiply the op the other fraction by the de by the denominator of the opposite fraction. So we'd multiply this one by 5 over 5, and multiply this one by 3 over 3. We're going to do the same thing here. So our common denominator is tangent x times 1 plus secant x. So I'm going to move my 3 over here a little bit. I'm going to multiply this by tangent x over tangent x. And I'm going to multiply this by 1 plus secant x over 1 plus secant x. And I put parentheses there so I remember to multiply properly. All right, so when I multiply this out in the numerator, I get, so I'm multiplying here, I get secant x plus secant squared x minus, when I multiply this out, I get a tangent squared x over my common denominator of 1 plus secant x times tangent x. And I'm not going to multiply that out. When you work these problems, it's often helpful not to multiply out this, this thing in the denominator. Sometimes we get things that cancel. <coughs> All right, I'm, I'm kind of excited right now because I see this secant squared x minus tangent squared x. And I know I have an identity that relates secant squared and tangent squared. If you just want to, yeah, just go ahead and bring it in. Okay. Um, so let's look back at our identity. We'll go back here a few pages. If I subtract tangent squared x from both sides of this equation, I get secant squared x minus tangent squared x equals 1. So we go back here. And where were we? One more. Okay. So this is secant x plus 1 over 1 plus secant x times tangent x. I have a secant x plus 1 here, secant x plus 1 there. What happens with those? They cancel. And this equals 1 over tangent x, which is cotangent x. Much simpler than this thing that we started off with. Took a little work to get there. But that's what makes it fun. All right, questions on what we did there? Yes. Which, see, we our, our Pythagorean identity says that 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. If I subtract tangent squared x from both sides, I get 1 equals secant squared x minus tangent squared x. Secant squared x minus tangent squared x equals 1. So I just substituted 1 in for that secant squared x minus tangent squared x. This quantity is 1. That's what this tells us. So secant x plus 1 is what's left. Yes. I'm sorry? So up here? Yeah. Because I have a one a secant x plus one in the denominator also. So I have a common factor in the numerator and denominator. And then you have to make it one over tangent x because tangent's in the bottom. Tangent's in the bottom, yes. And then I just rewrote that as cotangent. All right, let's look at a different kind of problem. So these are simplified problems. Um, let's look at a factor. So these next ones we want to factor. First one is cosine squared x. Cosine squared x minus 1. 
Now, if we had a, if we had something that said factor x squared minus one, how would we factor x squared minus one? We want to write when we factor. We want to write this as parentheses. So how does x squared minus one factor? x minus 1, x plus 1. This is exactly the same thing, but instead of an x, we have a cosine. We have cosine squared instead of x squared. So this is cosine x plus 1 times cosine x minus 1. Exactly the same as this. Instead of an x, we have a cosine. And we can check. If we multiply this back out, we'd get a cosine squared x minus 1. So that's all this one was asking us to do, factors. And where we would use this, where we are going to use this eventually, is we would have an equation that said cosine squared x minus 1 equals 0. That would say cosine x plus 1 times cosine x minus 1 equals 0. And then we can set each of those parentheses equal to 0 and come up with a solution for our equation. All right, next one. We want to factor sine squared u minus 3 sine u minus 10. We can think of this exactly like x squared minus 3x minus 10. So how would we factor this thing? How does this factor? Okay. X minus 5 times x plus 2. That gives me my negative 10. And add these two to get the negative 3. This is the same thing, but instead of an x, we have a sine. So this is going to be sine u minus 5 times sine u plus 2. Yes? So Yeah, if you if you had if you had this, yeah. it's exactly the same, exactly the same process, and we're going to use it the same way. We're, we would solve an equation if we had sine squared u minus three sine u minus ten equals zero. That would let us solve that equation. So it's just doing the same factor like that. Yeah, when it just says to factor, it just wants us to write write our answer with the two parentheses. All right, let's do one that's a little more complicated. Secant squared t uh, minus tangent t minus 3. All right, what keeps us from factoring this one right away? Here. We, our trig functions are different, right? We have a secant squared and a tangent, so we don't have the same trig function. Do we have something that we could relate a secant and a tangent somehow together? Some kind of identity? Yes? We know that tangent squared t plus 1 equals secant squared t, our Pythagorean identity. I'm going to substitute this for secant squared t. Secant squared t is tangent squared t plus 1. So I can write this as tangent squared t plus 1 minus tangent t minus 3. And now I can combine my like terms. I have a plus 1 and a minus 3. So I get tangent squared t minus tangent t minus 2. And how do I factor this now? Tangent t 
minus 2 and a plus 1. And that would be my answer for that one. If all we're trying to do is factor. All right, questions there. Okay, just got a couple more types of problems to show you. Um, this next one is one that um, there really, there's no shortcut around just having to remember that that's how this one works, um, this type of problem works. I want to write 1 minus cosine x, or sorry, 1 over 1 minus cosine x. So it's not a fraction. This one, you just have to remember. You have to remember that this is how you do this kind of problem. It's, it's like multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to take 1 over 1 minus cosine x and multiply by 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. So you just have to remember that that's, that's how you do these sometimes. Alright, so when I multiply this out, I get 1 plus cosine x, and when I multiply these two together, I get 1 minus cosine squared x. I have a 1 and a trig function squared. When I see that, those two together, I, sh I should think is there some identity I can use there? Yes? This is our Pythagorean identity. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. All right, we still have a fraction. But what can I do with this fraction? How can I work with this fraction? I can split this into two pieces. We have a common denominator of sine squared x, so that's 1 over sine squared x plus cosine x over sine squared x. I just split this into two fractions with a common denominator of sine squared x. 1 over sine squared x is, how can I rewrite that? 1 over sine x is cosecant squared x. Okay, that's not a fraction anymore. And I'm going to say cosine, this is cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. I have a sine squared x there. So I have cosecant squared x plus cosine x over sine x, cotangent x, 1 over sine x, cosecant. So this is my answer. I've rewritten 1 minus cosine x, so it's not a fraction. So 1 minus cosine x, 1 over 1 minus cosine x equals cosecant squared x plus cotangent squared times cotangent times cosecant. Wait, so for all the problems that just write it so it's not a fraction, uh, you multiply by the fraction? Yes. Yes. And then, like, would there going to be one where the opposite, like, make it, make it kind of like We could, so the problem could say simplify this expression. Uh -huh. This would simplify, if you worked it the other direction, it would simplify to that. Okay. All right, one other type of example. Any other questions on this example? So this is, this is one, one kind of problem that we do with identities, that there's really, this is the way to do it, is this multiply by the conjugate idea. The others, there's there often multiple ways you can work. All right, last one. The way this kind of problem is asked is uh, use the substitution x equals 3 sine u
to write the square root of uh, 9 minus x squared. as a function of u. So what this problem is asking us to do is substitute and simplify. So I'm substituting this into here for x. So I'm going to say this is square root of 9 minus 3 sine u squared. And I square that quantity, 9 minus 3 sine u squared is going to be 9 sine squared u. And how can I simplify this? Uh, what, well, what can I do with this 9? It's a common factor. I need to factor it out first, right? I can write that as 9 times 1 minus sine squared u. Factor out that 9. Let's do one last thing. 1 minus sine squared u is cosine squared u from our Pythagorean identity. And when I take the square root of this, I get 3 cosine u. This is 9 minus x squared written as a function of u using this substitution. This combined with the technique we used from last chapter where we had variables on the sides of our triangles and we came up with, we, we wrote our triangles and, and found the missing sides with variables on the sides of our triangles. These two combined you use very often in calculus. I said it's called trig substitution. You do that procedure to write some function with an x in it as a trig function because often that helps you do certain kinds of problems more easily. So this, this comes up quite a bit. All right, questions on what we did there? Okay. Um, homework. All right, there you go. Um, 